Today we're going to show you how to replace the wheel motor in a 115H. We're going to replace the wheel motor in this one because it had multiple, and I mean multiple, collision uh, errors and wheel motor overload errors. So uh, we hooked it up to auto check and after yeah, like five seconds this wheel motor here just stopped spinning. So we know that's the issue and we're going to take that out and replace it. We're going to show you what to do here. Now, if you watched our other video about how to remove this top cover, then you know you have to get in here and you have to release these tabs. There's one up here and there's one down on the bottom and a couple at the front here to get the, um, the upper cover off of this 115H. And we just release those tabs. Let's step back down so it doesn't fall. And show you, this is what we're talking about. You got to take this the shell piece off of there. And again, if you saw our other video, it gives a better um, explanation of how all this is done. We're just gonna kind of buzz through it here a little quick because uh, our main focus is on this wheel motor. All right, now we have that, that shell piece off of here and we gotta use our tool right here to release the uh, tabs on the four joysticks to get the um, main body here off of the automotor and get down to the chassis. So we'll just push this down in here you can use two screwdrivers if you really want to. This tool just makes it a little bit easier to um, get these to release, usually. There we go. That one's out. And again, this is all on another video of ours, so if you want to see this a little bit more in depth, you can check that video out, how to remove the top cover on a 115H automower. Snap that one back in. That happens from time to time. There we are. And now we're free and we're down to the, uh, the chassis of our automower. We want to remove this knob because all of this has to come apart. We have to split this top cover off of here. So this is going to come off anyway. Now what you want to do before you go tear anything apart is you want to clean this up really well. Um, you want to make sure that you don't wash it when it is in this state. You got a filter in here. This is to help keep good air coming in to cool your electronics, get the hot air out. If you try to wash this in this state right here, water is going down in there and you're going to ruin your electronics. So avoid that. Use an air hose or a brush, whatever, you know, light air to get the uh, the debris off of here. And then you're ready to take this apart. And you're just going to take these screws apart the whole way around here. And then you'll be into your, your electronics. And the reasons we have to do that is because we have to get into unplug the wheel motor from the motherboard. All right, with our top cover off, we're going to finish taking out the rest of these screws that hold down our upper chassis. So we can get in here to the motherboard to be able to unplug the wires for the wheel motor. Just got a few more here to take out. And I think that should be it. Yep. And then our ribbon cable, pull this front here a little bit, ribbon cable right here going into the HMI board coming up from the main board. Your choice, you can unplug it down here at the main board or at the HMI board. We usually just do HMI because um, you know, just easier to do, but it's all a matter of preference, whatever you feel like doing. So there we are. We got everything apart and now we're ready to get into taking our wheel off so we can actually unmount the wheel motor and you can see the wheel motor right down there. This is the one we're going to be taking out over here is the other one. You know, everything's pretty open in there and easy to get to. Once you have your 115H opened up, here at your main board going across the well it'll be the front of the mower while it's running but where your drive wheels are at you have two white plugs here and of course they could always change through the years they used to be black on some of the old 430x's and stuff but anyway these plugs here to the outside um they are the ones for your wheel motors so you have this plug here goes to that wheel motor this plug right here goes to this wheel motor and of course if you have any doubts you can simply just follow the wire and you can see it down here coming from the wheel motor 
up through to this plug. So you want to go ahead and unplug that one because this is the wheel motor that we're going to be removing. All right, since we're replacing the wheel motor, obviously we got to get the uh, wheel off of here. So we got to start by taking this cap off. And sometimes you can just grab it and pull it off there and get it to unclip. Or you just take it and put a screwdriver down in here or something flat. Just unclips off there, just like on the 300 and 400 series. Same deal. And then you got this nut here that holds the wheel on. There's always an argument. Is it standard? Is it metric? What size do you use? Some people say 15 16 Some people say 24 millimeter. I say they both work. And <laughs> just whatever you got. If you got a 15 16 or you got a 24 millimeter, the important part is you need to get the job done. So we're going to use a 24 millimeter this time. And uh, I'm going to take this nut off of here. Then the washer. And now That's removing it. the wheel motor is just like removing the wheel motor on the uh, 400 and 300 series of automotors. You have your four screws around the outside here. All you need is a T20 Torx bit to remove those screws and remove those four. And that wheel motor will slide right on out of there. Now, one thing I will warn you of, I see people posting videos where they're using some kind of power tool to take these out strongly recommend not doing that because some of these new power tools have a good bit of torque and all it takes is for that thing to just you know grab that screw and give it a good a good jar to break loose and you can strip the threads out of here you know th this is a metal screw going into a a plastic housing so that's why you want to do this by hand because you want to get a feel for it and you don't want to go ruining that whole chassis and have to replace it, which means taking everything out of this chassis to put it in the new one or um, trying to get some kind of thread insert in, insert in there, making sure it's just right. Because this is on a wheel motor, you know, if, if this thing gets stuck or starts spinning or runs into something, you know, you get a little bit of torque, that whole housing is going to start moving. Or if it doesn't seal up properly, this is a low point here. And you're going to start getting moisture and dirt and debris and everything else inside that, that housing. So there you go. That's our wheel motor right there. We got it all out. So this is our new wheel motor we're going to put in the 115H. And it's important, again, to realize that this is the same wheel motor used in the 300 series of automotors. I think because a lot of people saw our video uh, explaining how the collision system works on the 115H and how it uses the readings coming from the wheel motor as to how much power it has to supply the wheel motor and how much current draw uh, the current the uh, wheel motor is drawing to tell whether it has collided with something or not people were probably thinking that the wheel motor has got to be different because it would have to have some different kind of technology in there or something added to it to be able to be used in that system well it doesn't it's just the same same wheel motor as the 300 series you know just a plain plug all that extra stuff is determined by the uh, the motherboard in the machine and um, the wheel motor, just a regular wheel motor like like the uh, ones in the 400 series as we just showed you, but smaller. And if you're going to order one, you're doing your own repair, you'll notice that there is an O-ring behind here that comes standard on these wheel motors. You know, if you order a wheel motor, you're getting that O-ring. It's already on there. It's already in place. And this is just bolted in and then plug it in and you're ready to go. Now, before we go putting that new wheel motor into this 115H, I just wanted to show you this in case you would uh, pick up the wrong wheel motor. There is a large difference between the ones for a 115H or a 300 series automower and the one back here for a 400 or 500 series automower. You can see this electric motor much bigger than this little one here for the 115h when we put them there right next to each other or like that you can see there's a difference in length there's a difference in the diameter and the electric motor is the dead giveaway there as to which one's which so if you go in and just say you need a wheel motor for an auto mower and they give you this one you know you got the wrong one because it's not even going to from the flange back it's not going to fit in there it's going to be trying to sit at an angle because of the way the um, lower chassis is formed on that 115H. 
And I'm sure you'll run into issues if you try to jam one of these into a 300 series as well. Um, this, like I just said, this is the one from the 115H we just pulled out. And it's also the same wheel motor that they use in the 300 series. You know, your 310, your 315, 315X. That's it right there. Now, when you go to install your new wheel motor, you want to make sure that this surface right here at every screw is really clean and around here where your o-ring seals against this so that way you can keep all the extra dirt debris and moisture out of this thing and keep it from ruining your circuit boards inside there especially because they advertise this as being hose washable so there's a good chance it's going to be seeing a lot of water in places that the other models wouldn't really see so that seal on there is really crucial so we'll fish our wires with our plug in through here and mount that right up like that and then we just got to put our four screws back in and this part now because there is a little bit of wiggle room here let me loosen this one back up you'll see what i'm talking about see you have you have room for this this wheel motor to wiggle around there and i have i have two of the screws in there so the reason why that's important is you want to get all four screws started so you have this wheel motor lined up right. And again, try to turn the screws backwards till you feel it pop. That gets it lined up with the threads that are already cut in there and you're not cross threading it, which is very easy to do. Because again, we're just running these metal screws into plastic. So there we go. We got everything lined up and we're just going to run them in a little bit at a time alternate around that way we're sure to get everything lined up and secured evenly Back up here there we are so our wheel motor is now in place Everything is nice and even and sealed up on there and we can put our wheel back on and um, After that we'll get back to Replacing everything on the top of the mower. All right time to put the wheel back on our 115 H So you're gonna make sure that this is all nice and clean back here So that, that can grip tight against the uh, wheel motor right against this surface on here I will pick this up And put that on there Put our washer on, put the nut on there, and remember what we told you earlier, doesn't matter if you've got a 24 millimeter or a 15 16, so either one's going to do the trick, and you want to you wanna make sure that they're good and snug so that the wheel can't slip, you know, especially if you get going up a hill or something like that, so you want to make sure it's not loose, when you turn it, you want to hear the wheel motor turning, um, we can give you the actual spec for it if you would like. Um, we can leave that in the comments below or something. But that's what you got to do to put your wheel back on. The reverse of everything you did to take it off. Get the nut on there. Make sure it's tight like we said. And then just snap your center cap back on. And that's it for the wheel motor. Uh, fastening it back into the chassis and assembling your wheel. Alright, so if you didn't do it when you were assembling your... Um wheel motor into the chassis of the automower. You can do this now before you seal everything up. You gotta come in here and grab the wire and the, uh, the plug from your wheel motor right here. And we're gonna plug that right into the port on the main board where we unplug the other one. Oop, slipped out of my hand there. And just push that in there. So you don't have a gap between either the male plug or the female part of the plug and a little tab on the top snaps into place. Now we're ready to connect this to our upper chassis and fasten it down. Okay, we're all ready to seal this 115H back up. The only thing we got to do is plug our ribbon cable back into our HMI board here plug that in and once those little ears snap over the plug you know you're good to go 
always make sure to replace your seals when you have these apart. You actually have a seal right here on uh, this 115H and here between the lower chassis and the upper chassis. So it's a little bit different than the uh, 400 series and the 300 series, but you want to make sure you get a new seal in there. That way everything is, um, is sealed up and you're going to keep that dirt, debris, and moisture and all that stuff out there that would ruin your, your circuit boards prematurely. And again, that, that's something you really want to focus on on this 115H because it is advertised as being hose washable. So if you go wash it with a hose, you want to make sure that it is sealed up and keeps all that extra water out of there. Now we can put our screws in here and fasten this top down now that we have our, uh, have our stuff in place underneath there. And our upper chassis is sitting in place on the lower chassis. And we'll start right in the middle here and work our way out. Again, spin the screws backwards till you feel them pop into place. Go around. You don't want to you don't want to snug them all down right away because you want to make sure that you're getting everything into place properly. And don't use power tools on this because you will end up stripping out the holes prematurely. And then you've got to either rig it up to keep it together and probably not have it sealed very well or you've got to replace that lower chassis and that's going to be a pain in the butt so all right we went around we got everything torqued down nice and even and um we're all secure sealed up we're ready to put our, we're ready to put our top, top cover back on and that one's a real easy job we're just going to line up with the joysticks and push down latch it into place couple on it just to make sure and we're good to go there so we can put our cover back on here you really just got to snap that down in there it's pretty easy to do snap that in and underneath there you got your knob for your your height adjustment get that lined up I get exactly which way we had that facing Ah, there we go. Just got to twist it around here and feel for it. Get that lined up. Oop, pop that back out again. Again, this just clips into place here. So we get that in, and then we just have to snap our top cover back on here. There we go. Latch down, and we're all good to go. This mower is ready to put back out and uh, give it a test run.